What up guys, JP back at you once again, bringing you guys another episode in my entire DVD and Blu-ray collection. This is episode number 17. We are continuing on through the DVDs. We will get to the Blu-rays later. This is of course a series where I talk about everything that's in my collection very briefly. So next up, coming in on episode number 17, we have the Leprechaun 4 pack here. I really do need to upgrade to that Blu-ray set just to have these films all in one set on Blu-ray. It would mean a lot to me because I've always been a big fan of the franchise. I actually grew up watching, you know, the first four films endlessly. I would rent them all the time, especially part one and two and three. I kind of skipped part four a lot of times for obvious reasons, but the first Leprechaun is a damn fun movie and the second one I think is even better and I think the third one is even better than that. They really are a solid little trilogy right there. They have their cheesy moments of course but to me the leprechaun was actually scary when I was a kid. I know that sounds hard to believe. People might find that really out there to be scared of this you know comedic character but the comedy kind of went over my head when I was a kid and I just saw this great practical effects. I mean, I still think the Leprechaun's makeup is is extremely well done. I, I think it's very creepy. Leprechaun 2 is a lot of fun, but the third one is really the best Leprechaun movie. If you're going to try to see a Leprechaun movie, you've never seen one before, or you want to show somebody a Leprechaun movie, the best bet for you to get them to like it, like it would probably be part 3. Part 4 is pretty awful. I mean, we've talked about these at length, so I'm not going to hold on to them too much longer. After that, we have Leprechaun in the Hood. Uh, this one, I'm just not a big fan of. I liked it even less when we talked about it on the podcast. I really have an uh, issue with the, um, the portrayal of the lead characters who are supposed to be this, like, righteous positive hip-hop group yet they're completely going against everything they're standing for in the film and they're contradicting themselves and it's not even like one of those things like oh look what we've become you know we were standing up against this and now we're look where we we are now it's just a stupid script it's bad <laughs> leprechaun in the hood is not good <laughs> After that, we have Leprechaun Back to the Hood, which I actually do like. I think it's actually a solid Leprechaun movie. Uh, I would probably put it in the, you know, right there with the first three. It's uh, it's pretty good. I actually do enjoy this one. It actually has a commentary with uh, Warwick Davis on it, and I think it's one of the only uh, DVDs to actually have features. You know, I'm not sure what's on the Blu-ray set and, and whatnot, but... I, re I really loved Leprechaun movies, and I, I I am really curious to get that Blu-ray set to see how they look in HD. I've still not seen Origins yet, so that's another one I want to check out, even though I hear bad things. After that, we have Let the Right One In. Now, this is probably my in my top five favorite films in the last decade. This film is so good that it's an injustice for me to have on DVD. I need the Blu-ray. I'm not a big upgrader, unless it's like a franchise or, you know, some of my favorite films. But the idea of seeing this in HD... I haven't even watched this DVD. I actually bought this used, never watched it, because I want to wait and, and you know, have that first revisiting experience on HD Blu-ray gotta have it. I, I mean, it, it's really ridiculous that I still don't own it. Fantastic movie. If you've never seen this, you need to check it out because it, it, it seriously is not even my favorite, not even one of my favorites of the last 10 years, but it's literally one of the best horror films to come out in the last 10 years. I don't even see how it could be argued. It is that good. Let the Right One In is a hell of a movie. Definitely want to grab that Blu-ray very soon. After that, we have a film here that I actually never seen. I grabbed it from Family Video for the uh, two for three dollars, and that is Locker, The Locker. I don't really know much about this one. It doesn't look very good. It is unrated. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't look very good. Doesn't sound very good. 
I don't really know anything about it. So this is one of those like films that you th you have a big list of them. You get like 20 to 30 titles and you put it in a randomizer and you watch one like every other week. And it's all titles that you have no interest in and you own in your collection because they were cheap. They're probably bad, but every once in a while you'll probably find a good one in that stack. So that's why you watch them. Uh, this one I probably won't watch for a little while. But I will watch it if it pops up in the randomizer when I start doing that again. I used to do it all the time and kind of been wanting to redo that again. Coming in next, we have The Lost Boys in the Snapper Case. Uh, I've had this DVD for a very long time and it is so good. It's literally one of my favorite horror films. Top 20 for sure. I love The Lost Boys. There's just something about it. I just connect with it. I love this gang mob mentality of these vampires, these cool kids. Like, even as a kid, I wanted to be part of that group. Like, they were badass. They had their underground cavern hotel thing. They had all the, I mean, which looked cool as hell, by the way. They, they rode these dirt bikes. They just would live in life free, man. They didn't, they just partied and chilled and just were creatures of the night. It looked awesome. And, you know, then you have the, the Frog Brothers and you have uh, Corey Ham's character who y you also f side with because those kids are kind of cool too, comic books and stuff. Uh, it's just, I love the setting. I love the, the music. I just love the story. It's, it's such a good horror film. I love The Lost Boys so much. It's so good. The Lost Boys is one that I, I can literally watch any day, any hour, any time. Coming in next, we have The Lost Boys, The Tribe. Now, I was so excited for this film. Blindly excited. I mean, almost to the point where it's like embarrassing you know <laughs> because this film had no right to exist and, and really it, it, I don't know what I was thinking but I remember you know I, shit this came out so long ago like 2008 or something and I remember thinking like okay I know that it's been so long but I heard that Corey Feldman was in it and I, this was back where I didn't follow like the horror news as much so I just knew that it was happening I knew that it was direct to video. For some reason in my head, I thought it was going to be awesome, and it clearly wasn't. And, you know, any reasonable person could see that it's not going to be, but for some reason, I was like blinded by nostalgia and I was super pumped for it, and I bought it for like $20 the day it came out. <laughs> and uh, even after watching it, I was like, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it was. Kind of like lying to myself to make me feel better that I didn't waste $20. But in all honesty, it's not that bad. It, it's all right. It's not good. I don't know. It's it's all right. Uh, it, it's kind of a weird idea to make a sequel to The Lost Boys that far later. Got a cool ass lenticular cover though. I will say that. After that, we have Lost Boys: The Thirst. This was a big lots buy. Now, The Lost Boys: The Thirst is actually a better sequel to The Lost Boys original it follows Corey Feldman a little bit more I actually did enjoy this one I thought it was pretty good uh, you know I would like to see them maybe do another one this one kind of ends on like a little cliffhanger where like oh maybe there's going to be werewolves involved now uh, Corey Feldman's I don't know people give him a lot of shit but I, I still like him I, I think he's you know he obviously has problems and stuff but I read his book the choreography and uh, it kind of gave me a new perspective on, on the guy. The guy's had like a difficult road. And uh, I like him. I, I, I think I'll always like Corey Feldman. Lost Boys of the Thirst is, is pretty good. It's an it's a, it's a oak. It's, when you think like a 2010-ish sequel to the 1980s 7 Lost Boys, I mean, what can you really expect? And this one kind of exceeds your expectations because you can't really expect much. After that, we have The Loved Ones. This made my top five of 2012. Love this movie. This movie is great. It's an Australian horror film. I just love the casting. I love this girl right here, this Lola. She just has this this nature to her, this this 
just batshit crazy uh, performance where she's just in control and she's sadistic and it's just I eat it up and you feel bad for the kid involved you and it all wraps up very nicely too it's it's a good movie it's it's a really good movie I, I mean it doesn't hold up as much on rewatch for me because it, it, the shocking shit isn't as shocking obviously but the first time I seen it man I was on the edge of my seat the whole time watching this one it was you know a, a huge uh, positive experience I remember renting it from the red box I think and, and just you know loved it loved it so much so that's the loved ones after that we have lovely Molly which uh, I actually liked I thought it was pretty cool uh, director of the Blair Witch Project you know in my head right now it's kind of like fuzzy I can't really remember it I think it was a little confusing or just you know not doesn't stick out in my memory that much but I, I did enjoy it I think I reviewed it a while back so uh, I'll probably give it a rewatch I mean I, I've pretty much liked everything that I've seen from uh, Eduardo Sanchez who of course was uh, the co-director uh, of um, the Blair Witch Project um, Believers was pretty good so yeah lovely Molly after that we have Madhouse and uh, I think I watched this one before. Yeah, I think this was a video nasty, and I, I think I watched it uh, as part of the video nasties. I can't really remember. Um, I don't really remember much about this one. It's very faint in my memory. I don't know. I, I think I liked it ish. It's from Dark Sky. I'll probably have to give this one another rewatch eventually. Because I really don't remember much about it at all. I think it goes under another title as well. After that, we have Manborg. This was a movie that Moods talked about on the podcast. I believe uh, Jeremy talked about it as well. It's from that uh, the Astron 6 or whatever. I think they're out of Canada. They just recently made The Editor, which is getting a lot of praise. I don't know about this one. Uh, everybody talks good about it, but to me, I don't know. I, I just don't know. It doesn't seem like something that I would really, really like, but... Who knows? Who knows? I've been surprised by these type of movies before. It kind of reminds me of like a trauma-ish type of thing. We'll see. We'll see. I'll check it out soon, actually, because I am kind of curious on that one. It's been in the collection for a while. After that, we have Maniac Cop. These are films that I did definitely consider upgrading to Blu-ray because I, I really like the Mani Maniac Cop trilogy, uh, especially the first two, but this one's pretty good. This first one here... Um, it's just, I love that New York setting, uh, Tom Atkins, Bruce Campbell, it's a good movie, it's a, it's a great slasher from the 80s, I love it, good stuff. And it's just a cool concept, right, Mani a Maniac Cop? Then we have Maniac Cop 2, which I actually like a little bit more, this one's a little more solid than the first one. There's a scene where the, the Maniac Cop just goes crazy in a police station, and it's awesome, there's like, people set on fire, I mean, this is a, this is pretty big action sequences in this one Maniac Cop 2 is awesome this one um, I wanna do a review I wanna do a trilogy watch of these soon then we have Maniac Cop 3 Badge of Silence which is the weakest in the series I've only seen it one time and I didn't really care for it I, I think it was a little below average I would be curious to go back and revisit it to see if there was anything. Sometimes when you watch something on a rewatch, you kind of pick out a few different things and maybe like it a little bit more. So I'd be curious to see if that would happen on a rewatch of Maniac Cop 3. Then we have Man's Best Friend, which I actually never seen. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely never seen this one. I don't really know much about it. Looks like a killer dog movie but it has Lance Henriksen in it it's probably pretty bad but I do like me some killer animal flicks so I'll, I'll definitely check this one out eventually maybe do like a couple maybe a double feature with some killer dogs or something so best uh, man's best friend that is in the collection and then finally for this part here we have uh, mask maker which I thought this was part of one of those um like lines like the uh after Dark Originals or whatever, but I guess it isn't. Uh, this one was alright. It wasn't bad. It was kind of this average slasher. Didn't really love it or hate it or can't really remember it either, but Mask Maker, it's alright. So, that's it for this part, guys. I'll see you guys next time with...
part number 18. Peace.